And the, I guess the thing that keeps me up at night yes. it isn't actually a sound related thing. It's it's more to do with the business side of, of things and the all, all the stuff that you have to do around the sound designing and engineering of things, uh, it, which is the stuff that you don't necessarily get trained on. You know, there's running your own business and managing your diary and getting your taxes done. And, and there's also all the political aspects of the job, which, you know, as well as getting it to sound right, you have to, you know, negotiate your budgets and... You know, negotiate to get the right amount of sound checking time in the schedule and there's a lot of political maneuverings that you have to do I think to get what you want um, and, and to get the right result when you're in the theatre and quite often that is more stressful I think than than the actual sound and performance I think yeah I think I also I certainly enjoy the pressure of a live performance and I enjoy you know knowing that things can go horribly wrong <laughs> Or horribly right, but it, the less fun things I think for me are actually dealing with all the politics. I, I, I think I've got quite used to it and got relatively good at working out how to get the things that I need and get the resources in place. But that's certainly one of the more sort of stressful elements of the job is you know having to step out of your shoes, step into the shoes of the producer or the promoter or the venue staff, and work out how to get uh, the things you need from them whilst also keeping them happy and, and, and hitting their targets as well. It, it's funny, as I get older, um, less things keep me up at night. Um, I, I think when you start out, you don't know what you're doing and you want to know what you're doing. And that's a frustration and that, that keeps you, you up at night because you're thinking of how to improve. I, I think... An, an important aspect of of being an engineer is is what drives you to be good is the fact that you don't think you're very good uh, and i guess one of my big pet peeves is when sound isn't localized to the performance and this is a particularly a thing with 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 theater where where sound effects are rooted through the proscenium system or there is some disconnect between the audio and the visual and it's something I'm really passionate about is trying to make the audio experience feel really great for an audience and feel really connected to that performance rather than it being this thing that happens out of a couple of speakers on the proscenium so it's a, yeah that's that's one of my biggest pet peeves is when the performance is happening over there but the sound's coming out from, from a box over there. I completely agree. I, th I think, I just think it's disrespectful to the actors. I guess we're, we're where we are in our careers because, you know, we're relatively good at what we do, which mm. is sound, audio, whatever. Um, and it's it's all the other bits that, that frankly, we're not so good at, which is, which is the, uh, the problematic areas. Mm. Um, <laughs> yes, dealing, dealing with, with negotiations is always a, a tricky one. In a studio situation, it doesn't matter. You can hit hit stop. You don't even have to hit rewind nowadays. You know, you can do it again a thousand times. But be it theatre or live events, you are running to a set timeline. And it will not go according to plan. It might once in your career. Um, things are going to go wrong. Not necessarily wrong. They're going to go different. And and if you're not ready for that, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm.